So you may be wondering what drugs are associated with gynecomastia, or what is gynecomastia? Okay, gynecomastia is a condition in which men develop breasts. It's usually physically harmless, but it can lead to unwanted appearance changes. Many medications can cause gynecomastia. These include uh, spironolactone, whatever, alda, alda cone, whatever, uh, antipsychotics like Haldol, and prostate drug, uh, prostate cancer medications like Casadex. If you have gynecomastia or are concerned about developing it, talk to your healthcare provider. They can offer management tips, including potential adjustments to your medication routine. Okay. So keep in mind, one of those drugs is the antipsychotic Haldol. As most people know, medications can cause side effects. For some med, this includes breast development, a side effect that can impact confidence and self-image. Here, uh, we'll talk about gynecomastia. We'll cover what it is, which medications could cause it, and if you can take action to prevent or treat it. So gyno, so it comes from gyno and comastia. Gynecomastia, sometimes referred to as casually as gyno, is technically a term for men developing enlarged breasts. Although it can be concerning to notice extra breast tissue, the condition is very phys is usually physically harmless. Uh, it's physically harmless, but it's not psychologically harmless. And also, I would question how physically harmless it is. Uh, so, aside from being a somewhat rare medication uh, side effect, breast growth can be a normal part of some stages of life. For instance, some newborn babies have breast development and leak a milk-like fluid from their nipples, regardless of their sex. This large, this breast development typically goes away as the baby grows. Males can also experience some breast development during puberty. In fact, is they, as many as 50% of males experience breast growth during this stage, but this breast development also usually goes away at only uh, over time. Similarly, men over the age of 50 can experience breast development due to natural changes in hormone levels that can happen with age. What are common symptoms of gynecomastia? Swollen and tender breasts are the most common symptoms of gynecomastia. At first, you may notice a lump appear under the nipple. It may show up in one or both breasts, and it's not unusual for one breast to be larger than the other. Gynecomastia doesn't usually represent a medical problem, although it can lead to unwanted appearance changes in the chest. However, if breast enlargement is accompanied by sudden pain or other concerning symptoms, it's important to reach out to your healthcare provider for guidance. Which common medications can cause gynecomastia? Several medications that impact certain hormones in the body can cause gynecomastia. Some of these medications cause high levels of certain hormones, which call, which, uh, while others cause low levels of other hormones. The hormones most often at play are prolactin, estrogen, and androgens. Some of these medications, which have been grouped together by the three main hormones in involved, are discussed below. High levels of prolactin. Both men and women naturally make prolactin, which serves many important roles in the body. But if a person's prolactin levels are too high, they might have hyperprolactinemia. When, uh, when this happens to men, it's possible to develop symptoms like gynecomastia and erectile dysfunction. Many things, including some health conditions, can elevate pro prolactin levels. Haldol, respiridol, chl uh, chlorpromazine, flufenazine, uh, reglin, 
methyl dopa, uh, certain anti... So these are all antipsychotic type medications, certain antidepressant medications like floxetine, steroline, which is Zoloft, and amitriptyline, and opioid medications like morphine. Estrogen-like effects. When women develop breasts, estrogen plays a key role. This is true also for men. So anyone who takes a medication that raises the amount of estrogen in their body can experience gynecomastia as a possible side effect. Some medications that can have this effect are anabolic steroids, diazepam, which is Valium, another psychiatric medication, digoxin or lanoxin, phenytoin or dilantin, human chronic gonadotropin, Anti-androgen effects. Androgens are a category of hormones that include testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Androgens play many roles in the body, including blocking the effects of estrogen. However, some medications interfere with androgens, like testosterone and DHT. When this happens, they are not able to block estrogen's effect as well. As mentioned, estrogen is a key hormone for breast development in both men and women, or in women and men. So when estrogen is less restricted by androgens, a person may be more likely to develop gynecomastia. Medications that can have an anti-androgen effect include spi uh, spironolactone, finasteride, simatidine, and ketoconazole. Okay, certain medications that treat prostate cancer like bicalcu bicalcutamide and flutamide. Uh, so these, these drugs that are being used to treat prostate cancer, that's a meaningful purpose for a drug. That is a real disease that is really being treated with a real medication. As far as the antipsychotics, it's questionable. It is questionable. Now, I want to make sure people know I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I'm not an MD. I'm not a DO. I'm not an ND. I'm not a nurse practitioner. I'm not an LPN. Not an RN. Not a psychologist. Nothing like that. Not a, not, not a dietitian. Not a nutritionist. Da, 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 da. But the point is that the main difference between psychiatric medications and things like medications to treat prostate cancer as medications that are being used to treat prostate cancer are being used to treat a legitimate medical condition not a psychiatric disorder okay people know that prostate cancer exists and it can be proven saying someone is psychotic or convincing somebody they are psychotic not the same thing so how likely are these medications to cause gynecomastia? Some medications are more likely to cause gynecomastia than others. For example, some medications that treat prostate cancer uh, have a risk of this side effect. Research shows that up to 70% of people taking these medications uh, develop gynecomastia over time. Another medication that's known for causing the side effect uh, is spironolactone. This medication is approved to treat multiple conditions, including swelling due to fluid buildup. In clinical trials, about 9% of men who took spironolactone developed gynecomastia. But other studies have found that it may uh, affect up to 29% of men. Certain antipsychotic medications are also commonly linked to gynecomastia. Certain antipsychotic medications are commonly linked to gynecomastia. This includes medications like haloperidol, flofenazine, and respiradone. The specific level, so uh, the specific level of risk is different for each medication, also probably different because the doses are different with every person. In other cases, a medication may have some risk of causing gynecomastia, but the risk is low. For example, 
Serotraline is a common antidepressant used to treat several mental health conditions. Uh, it's been linked to gynecomastia, but the side effect is thought to be about to affect less than one percent of the population. So, dopamine agonists. These are uh, which medications are used to treat gynecomastia. Dopamine agonists. These include medications like bromocriptine, uh, cabergoline which may help manage high prolactin levels, selective estrogen receptor modulators, tamo, uh, tamoxifen, one type of CIRM, uh, helps, to, helps lower the amount of estrogen in the breast tissue. So it can also help treat gynecomastia. Uh, Raloexaphene, uh, or Avista may also be an option. Estrogen, or androgens, like DHT, may treat symptoms caused by little or no testosterone in your body. Can you prevent gynecomastia? Sadly, there aren't a lot of well-researched ways to prevent gynecomastia. Usually, the first step is to stop taking the medication that's causing gynecomastia. And over time, gynecomastia symptoms may resolve on their own, but it's important that you, on, that you only stop taking medication if your healthcare provider gives you the okay. Moving forward. Needless to say, you're probably aware of the fact that gynecomastia has psychological impacts on guys, okay? Growing, uh, you know, double D breasts, or in most cases an A cup, might have an effect on a man's psyche. So many studies show that an astoundingly high percentage of men are dissatisfied with, engrossed with, and even impaired by concerns about their of their appearance. One American study, for example, found that the percentage of men dissatisfied with their overall appearance is 43%, which has nearly tripled in the past 25 years. Gynecomastia is a condition uh, seen among boys and men as a swelling in the breast tissue. We already know about this. We just covered it. But gynecomastia can cause low self-esteem. Men with gynecomastia are likely to have a recurring feeling of incompleteness, uh, incompleteness due to body form dissatisfaction and social phobia. These patients are also likely to mentally imagine a society that attaches abnormality and stigma to the condition. A study published by the Journal of Plastic Reconstructive Surgery revealed that compared to a normal population, psychological metrics that measure social phobia and low self-esteem were significantly higher in men with gynecomastia. Patients, uh, patients, uh, da, 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 wait, wait, wait. Surgery revealed da, da, da. patients especially reported feelings of shame to expose the body, especially in social gatherings with people they are not related to. Several publications have recommended psychotherapy sessions, we all know how well that works, uh, with a clinical psychologist as an adjunct therapy for the management of the condition with an extension to post-operative patients. Okay, moving forward. So, hormone imbalance, so remember, these drugs, these psych meds, they uh, cause a hormonal imbalance, obviously, and these hormonal imbalances then can, of course, cause, uh, you know, a complication to the natural process of puberty, uh, and we see an uptick in um, puberty-aged people and below puberty age people, people on the cusp of puberty, with uh, concepts such as uh, transgenderism and things like that. So last week, uh, this person, this is uh, Bonner General Health. So last week, they took a look at the endocrine system, how it works and how it can go wrong when hormones are not appropriately secreted. The result is an over or under production of hormones. If you missed the article, you could find it online. 
To recap a bit, hormones are your body's chemical messengers produced in the endocrine glands. These powerful chemicals travel around your bloodstream telling tissues and organs what to do. They help control many of the body's major processes, including metabolism and reproduction. Healthline.com says, in children, hormones play an essential role in their development and overall health. Most disorders associated with hormonal imbalance are typically linked to abnormal growth or sexual development. So keep that in mind. They're linked to abnormal growth or sexual development if there's an imbalance in the hormones. Puberty occurs in boys between the ages of 9 and 14 and in girls as early as 8 and as late as 13. Hypothalamus, the uh, hypothalamus begins to produce a hormone called gonadotropin, causing the ovaries to produce estrogen in girls and the testes to produce testosterone in boys. The greatest gains in bone size and strength occur in adolescence, when the hormones of puberty speed up the bone growth process. So keep that in mind. You need these hormones to have strong, healthy bones. Bones not only get longer and wider, but they also get denser and stronger. Okay, slow height growth measured at, at less than two inches a year may be a sign of hormonal deficiencies. However, a slowing in growth is typical right before puberty starts. Delayed puberty is when a teen doesn't go through puberty at a typical age for girls and may be... It may mean her breasts don't develop by age 13 or that she hasn't started menstruating by her 16th year. For boys, it may mean no enlargement of the testes by the time he's 14. Precocious puberty is the opposite. It's when the appearance of the testi of testicular enlargement in boys or in breast development in girls happens at a younger age. Precocious puberty affects about 1 to 2% of American of children in the US. Premature adrenarche adreno, adrenarch is the development of uh, pubic and armpit hair, acne and adult body odors in both girls and boys. It happens earlier than expected. It's assumed when uh, uh, and uh, okay, and uh, happens earlier than expected. It's assumed to be caused by an increased secretion of male hormones from the adrenal glands. For the most part, none of these is a medical problem. But if you are concerned, talk with your pediatrician. Depending on the underlying condition causing your child's early or late development, medication may or may not be needed. Uh, H Health and Human Services says uh, for children undergoing early uh, pubertal development, your doctor may discuss whether to use the use of medication to delay puberty would be needed. The rationale for the treatment of precocious puberty is based on two main considerations. 20% of adult height is, attended, is attained during puberty and therefore untreated precocious puberty could result in stunted growth. Additionally, there may be psychological considerations for children maturing uh, much faster than their peers moving forward. Many psychiatric drugs have serious effects on body weight. Unexpectedly losing a loved one launched 18-year-old Deborah into an episode of major depression, triggering dangerous delusions that landed her in a hospital. Her doctor immediately started her on an antidepressant and on respir uh, respiridone, uh, an antipsychotic. In little more than a month, her weight shot up by 15 pounds. Gaining weight made it even more difficult for her, uh, for her to want to leave the house. Uh, in the medical community, antipsychotics are well known to cause significant weight gain, gains of 20 to 35 pounds or more over the course of a year, or two are not unusual. Deborah's doctor never warned her, though, leaving, the, leaving her feeling like she was losing herself both mentally and physically. The situation 
is not uncommon. So her doctor didn't even tell her this, didn't tell her stop eating shit food, because now you can't do that anymore, and don't eat when you're hungry. You got to learn to control your appetite more because this medication is going to make you hungry. And be careful what you eat because it could end up raising your cholesterol level, blah, 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 blah. And your sugar level, yada, da, da, da. Okay, could put you at risk of kidney disease, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And it also uh, points out that although the U.S. Food and Drug Administration curve carefully attracts acute side effects such as seizures, it pays less attention to longer-term complications such as weight gain, perhaps taking their cue from the FDA, doctors tend to downplay weight-related risks that accompany many psychiatric medications. Antipsychotics, a side effect that appears to be caused by uh, distribution of chemical signals controlling appetite, Cyprexa and Clozeril are the top two offenders. Studies have shown that on average, these drugs cause patients to gain more than eight pounds in just 10 weeks. These two drugs also bear the highest risk of metabolic syndrome, which encompasses weight gain and other related disorders, including type two diabetes. According to a 2011 study of 90 people with schizophrenia, although most antipsychotics are associated with weight gain, Arep or whatever, Abilify and Geodon stand out for their lower risk. As Deborah's case demonstrates, antipsychotics are, more, are by no means reserved for treating people with schizophrenia. A growing body of evidence supports the use of antipsychotics in combination with antidepressants for addressing treatment-resistant depression. Keep that in mind. A growing body of evidence, in heavy quotations, supports the use of antipsychotics in combination with antidepressants for, treating, <laughs> uh, for treatment resistant depression. Studies show that metformin, a diabetes drug, uh, and topiramate, an anticonvulsant, can be effective at reducing antipsychotic induced weight gain. Behavioral interventions may also help people maintain their weight while on these drugs. According to a 2015 study of 200 people with severe mental illness who have been taking an antipsychotic for at least one month and were overweight or obese, the study found that a personalized diet and exercise plan was helpful. So it was helpful to 40% of participants, a personalized diet and exercise plan. This is what doctors should be giving people when they leave with a script for a drug that causes weight gain. They should be leaving the doctor's office with a personalized diet and exercise plan. Antidepressants, a massive 2014 study of 22,610 people, revealed that antidepressants generally cause more modest weight gain than antipsychotics, although the outcome varies greatly from one drug to the next. Of the 11 antidepressants analyzed, uh, miratazapine or remeron caused the greatest weight gain. Now, what's funny is remeron is actually used as an appetite stimulant in cats. I know that because I've had to use it with my one cat, okay? A quarter of those, so in the veterinary field, they actually use miratazapine or remeron as an appetite stimulant for cats that have gone undergone surgery or just aren't feeling the best. A quarter of those who, so it's being used for more honest purposes in the veterinary business. A quarter of those who took miratazapine for a year gained more than 7% of their initial weight. Only one antidepressant, bupropion or wellbutrin, was associated with a small degree of weight loss. Depression itself however, is linked with an increased risk of becoming obese. Depression is already associated with an increased risk of becoming obese. The reverse holds true as well. The study uh, da, 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 found obese people are more likely to suffer from depression. No shit. Stimulants typically used to treat attention deficit disorders. Stimulants such as Ritalin are consistently associated with weight loss. Yes. That's not good. Whenever somebody says you can lose weight anyway, like when people are saying the starvation diet isn't the healthiest way to lose weight, yeah, that's how stimulants cause weight loss. 
For people who are prescribed stimulants to treat psychiatric conditions such as ADHD, weight loss comes as a side effect. Moving forward.